stand by for one of the most dramatic events in the history of space exploration. Tomorrow morning, NASA will attempt to land a rover on Mars. Perseverance will enter the red planet's atmosphere at 19,000 kilometres an hour. It will open the biggest supersonic parachute ever and guide itself to a spot roughly seven kilometres square. In galactic terms, that's like a postage stamp. It's the most challenging mission ever attempted to Mars and it should answer finally the questions humans have been pondering for 4,000 years. Is there life on Mars? Was there ever? And one day, could humans live there? The $2.6 billion project had liftoff last July. Now, a team of 350 people at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California are working on Martian time. A day on Mars is 40 minutes longer than here on Earth. And they'll be watching nervously as Perseverance tries to touch down in the Jezero crater in the middle of an ancient delta. The rover weighs a tonne and will have to dodge craters and boulders and also cliffs 80 kilometres high. The rocks and the craters and the cliffs, these things are hazardous to the rover, but these are the things that are interesting to the scientists. The extremely thin Mars atmosphere makes manoeuvring especially hard, but the tech is the best it has to be. So while it's descending on the parachute, it will actually be taking images of the surface of Mars and determining where to go based on what it sees. This is finally like landing with your eyes open. NASA is preparing for seven minutes of terror. That's how long it will take from entering Mars's atmosphere to touchdown on its surface. There's a lot counting on this. If all goes well, that's where Australia comes in. Perseverance will deploy its PIXEL tool, that's short for Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry, to take images of rocks, which are estimated to be three and a half billion years old. The gadget, just the size of a lunchbox, was invented by an Aussie, Dr. Abigail Allwood, and developed by Dr. David Flannery from the Queensland University of Technology. Their knowledge of ancient rocks and the study of microbes in the Pilbara, billions of years old, some of the oldest on our planet, has proved invaluable. And the Mars 2020 team visited the region in the run-up to launch. Members of the science team came out here to look at some of the oldest rocks that are on Earth. These rocks are anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion years old, about the same age as the rocks that we're going to find on Mars. And what's very special about them is they have evidence of the earliest life on Earth. These wrinkly layered structures that we call stromatolites, structures like this actually represent fossilized microbial mats. We believe that if life ever existed on Mars, it would have been purely microbial. This is precisely the kinds of signs of life that we'll be seeking. If you want to narrow the search down from just a you know, lucky dip approach, you know, is there life here, is there life there? You use the clues in the rock record to guide you to where the most habitable environments were. Then Perseverance will begin drilling, storing samples in tubes to be picked up on the next mission to Mars in the 2030s. And the data, which should start flowing 90 days after landing, will be monitored at QUT when California goes to sleep. Attached to the six-wheeler rover's belly will be a mini helicopter called Ingenuity. It'll hover three metres above the surface and travel up to 70 metres away to track the Mars scape below. It's the first drone ever to be used on another planet, scientists describing it as an extraterrestrial Wright Brothers moment. Scientists, meanwhile, will also test a chemical plant on board Perseverance, which can separate carbon dioxide and oxygen, possibly leaving a store for future human explorers. But, and it is a big but, that's a long way down the track. Since space exploration began to the Red Planet, almost half the missions have failed, including the European Space Agency's craft in 2016. NASA scientists won't know if the landing has been a success for 12 minutes, the time difference between Mars and Earth. After all, it is 204.5 million kilometres away. Keep up to date with the landing tomorrow morning on The Today Show.